Hey guys, this episode I'm super excited to talk about the brand new Request.js library that was released yesterday. And uh, you might have noticed here in the top commit, uh, I actually made a PR to it already. So that's pretty cool. So we are gonna dive into this. Request.js is a um, basically a wrapper around the fetch method in your browser, similar to rails.ajax in the past. With Rails 6 and earlier, we would use that to actually include the CSRF token automatically, and it provided just kind of a little bit wrapper around some of the logic required to create an X HR request. This uses fetch instead, which is the more modern version of that, and it wraps that and gives you a request object and a response object with some helper methods for you to make it a little bit easier. So this is the new way of doing things. This is in preparation for Rails 7 to ship very soon, hopefully, and um, it's very easy to use. So you'll use yarn add request rails request js to your rails app so i've got a rails application here already um, and we've got hotwire installed and stimulus as well and we just need to add this library so i have a quick example here we've got a publish method on a blog post and i have a publish button on the page that we have connected to a stimulus controller so let's pull that up here real quick for you. I have a post here, we have this publish link, and when we click on this, it will trigger the toggle inside of our stimulus controller. We'll just say console.log, hello. And we'll try that out just to make sure that that works. There we go, and that's all I have uh, already set up. So we can showcase this request. So to do the request, or to import the request, we can say from at rails request.js. We'll just import request. We don't really need to re uh, import the, um, the response because that's gonna be given to us automatically. We're not gonna be creating responses ourselves. This library will, so we don't need to import anything other than request. To create a request, it's very simple. We say request equals new request. We give it a method name like put, patch, post, um, delete. Any of those um, right now have to be capitalized, but I just, that PR that I made that got merged, um, uppercase is it for you automatically, so you don't have to do that uppercase if you don't want to. And then we are going to grab the URL value from the stimulus controller and submit that uh, post to, or the patch to that URL. So let me show you the publish link. We have a data controller publish, connects it to this controller. We have the URL value, which is this, and that's the URL. So we're gonna go make a request to the publish post path. And when we click this, we wanna call the toggle function inside of our controller. Very straightforward. So once we have our request created, we can say uh, request.perform. And there are no callbacks for this because it's going to be using the async await functionality in JavaScript, which allows you to just simply say const response equals await uh, request perform. So this method will return a response and in a promise and we can just wait until that is done. So rather than doing callbacks and having tons of nesting, we can use async await instead to run our code um, just like we would line after line in Ruby. So this is handy, but we do have to mark and denote on our method that this is an async method anytime that we use await inside of it. So this will make our request. We don't do anything special in our controller right now, but we can Click this, let's go to the network tab. Um, when we click publish, you'll see that it makes a request and it goes to patch to publish. And we get 204 no content, which is the default in Rails if you don't do any render. So let's go into our posts controller. And under publish, let's say respond to do format, format.html. Um, this, I'm not sure what we'll do in that exactly, but we'll do a format.json, and we can also do like a format.turbo stream as well. So we can have a bunch of these options. And in our JSON, let's render JSON um, title is at post.title. 
and we can check if our response was successful, response.okay. We can then grab the JSON from the response by saying response.json. But this is going to actually parse the JSON, so we need to await for that. And we can console log out the JSON. Now, one of those options in Rails.ajax that was always really confusing to remember was the data type. Um, and that was, I believe, it, I could be wrong on this out, off the top of my head, but specifying what type was returned from the server was always tricky to remember. What was the name of that? So instead of having data type and um, accept and those um, headers or options, we just simply say response kind now, and you can say JSON. And response kind is a lot clearer saying we want a JSON response from the server. So now this should hit the format.json and return us the title when we click that link. So let's refresh, let's go to the console and we'll click publish and we'll get our JSON response and it is parsed for us automatically with the response object from request.js. So that is super duper handy and our JavaScript can just run in line and execute as normal, super easy. Um, compared to how it used to be with callbacks and just kind of managing all of the context with that. So this is great. Now we can do HTML for this. Um, and one of the things I wanted to show you here is that if our HTML was actually unauthorized, we can respond with a 401, which is the unauthorized header. And if we do that, um, let me comment out this JSON example here. and. If we do that and say, you know, the user has to be logged in to publish, we're going to give you an error otherwise. We can click this uh, and actually let me refresh so that we get that HTTP or HTML request. So we get the 401 unauthorized, which you would expect, but there's built in functionality that if you set the headers for www authenticate, this is a header that basically tells the or hints and says, hey, uh, you need to authenticate and this is the path or URL to go to for that. So in our case, we don't have device or anything set up, so we're just going to send you to the root URL. Um, but the request.js library will look at this header. If it was an unauthorized 401 response and it has this header, it's going to redirect you there automatically. So this is super handy. So we can click publish and we'll be taken to the home page because it saw that this request was a 401 unauthorized and it included that header, so it knew where to take you when it uh, saw that. So this works great, but we can also do turbo stream responses, which is super handy. So if we change this to turbo stream, we can have a turbo stream in here and um, we can go say render turbo stream, turbo stream dot replace, published, um, let me go into the show and see if we have a div for that. Uh, we don't, so let's do a div ID equals published around the published at timestamp. And then we will have the published and we'll render out at post dot published at as our content. So what we'll do is we'll automatically set that value and we need a little logic in, inside here to say if at post.published at, we will update the post published at is either nothing or time.current. So we'll just go and toggle that published at timestamp automatically so here we'll say publish. It sets the value with the turbo stream and we can unpublish and there we go. So that is a pretty cool option for us to be able to modify that automatically. However, if we look at the network tab, we'll notice that when we click publish, it also does a get for the same page and that's because our link is actually still linking and we need to have an event prevent default in this method so that when we click publish, it only does a publish. So here, let's refresh. 
We'll click publish and now we are no longer um, refreshing the page automatically because we clicked that link. And you'll see that we don't have any updates anymore automatically. And that is because, at least right now, Request.js does not insert those TurboStream responses into the body yet. That might be something they'll do in the future. And um, if they do, we don't need to handle anything. But for now, we need to actually say, if the response was successful, we can say document.append, um, or rather document.body.insert adjacent HTML before end, and we want the body of the response. So here we'll say const body equals await response dot text. So we can get the actual text response, set it as a variable, and then insert that at the bottom of our page, which the TurboStream JavaScript will automatically run and handle that. So here we can unpublish and it will remove that. Um, we did not refresh the page, we only made the patch request. We can publish and we'll see the exact same thing, and so on. So what we should see in these is the response includes this turbo stream, and we want this to be actually inserted into the body before the end, so that the JavaScript will say, hey, let's go find that published element, and we're gonna replace the contents of it with this template. So if we inspect this here, we should have that div ID of published. And the reason that div went missing when we did that click a couple times is because we're using a TurboStream replace, which says, hey, let's replace this div and everything inside of it with the new version. But we actually just wanna update the contents inside of it. And we can use the update instead, and that will do the trick. So here we can click publish now, and we'll see that it updates that and it removes and adds that text for the published timestamp. So that is automatic for us now um, with this method here with insert adjacent HTML. Um, those TurboStream elements are added to the page but then they're parsed immediately and then removed. So they're just being run as soon as they are visible in the DOM. So that is something that we just need to append to the bottom of the page and then it will go make the changes anywhere on the page for us automatically. So that is it for Request.js. The source code of this is actually super simple. We can take a look at that real quick. The constructor is the method, the get, post, uh, patch, put, delete, your URL, and your options. Now the options here are um, being set by fetch options. So it will look through and basically uh, take the method and uppercase it. It has headers here that it will use as the defaults. Um, as far as I know right now, there's not a way to override the headers, but there wasn't in rails.ajax either. Um, it sets the body for you, and the signal, and the credentials, and the redirect follow, and perform well, wrap the response in a promise. So that works great. It will automatically set the CSRF token for you. It will grab it from the cookie, or use the meta content meta meta tag header for you, um, and it also does the content type, except the body, the response kind, the signal, and it removes any nil values or null values for you. So that's super handy. And then if we go back to response, you can take a look at this. But this basically is just a organized way of looking at that response. So it says, here's the status code. Was it successful or not? Was it unauthenticated? Was there an authentication URL given? The content type, um, the headers in HTML and JSON, and the text for that. So all of this is super useful, um, but this is now the recommended way of using Ajax request in your Rails app um, with the request JS, uh, especially because this will be probably built in out of the box with the Rails 7. I would assume that they're gonna be using this for a lot of things um, going forward. And this will be a common thing you'll include in your stimulus controllers as well. So that's it for this episode. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.